This video is about rate of reaction and chemical energetics. Okay, rate of reaction, uh, what you learn are the factors that affect rate of reaction. So there are four factors. Um, one is the temperature. So when you increase the temperature or if you heat it up, then it will, the particles there will collide more collide more frequently and with more energy. So therefore it will be a successful or effective. So it's a successful or effective collision. That is why the rate of reaction would increase. So if you increase the temperature, rate of reaction would increase. That's the first factor. Next, if we put a thing called catalyst. A catalyst is something that will uh, reduce the minimum requirement for a reaction to happen. So that is why more collision will happen. Uh, reduce the minimum requirement for a reaction to happen. So it's just like if I reduce the uh, passing mark, so more people can pass. So a catalyst does that, it, reduced, it reduces the minimum requirement for a reaction to happen. So more of them can uh, collide with sufficient or uh, enough energy. So you see each of the explanation is all about collision. They must collide with enough energy and frequently, then the rate of reaction um, will increase. So we need the effective collision here. So it all ends up with effective collision. So this is a key word, uh, you use it now and you will use it again in grade nine and 10. Okay, the next thing would be concentration or we can explain it the same way as a higher pressure. So if we increase the concentration of the reactant or the pressure, of the container containing the reactant, if it's a gas, then they will have more chances to collide because it's higher in concentration. So can you imagine if it's low concentration, they're kind of far away, but if you increase the concentration, they have nowhere to run. There's more of them. So one, two, three, four, five, six, I increase it to double. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12. So they got nowhere to go but to bump into each other. So uh, higher chances of collision or higher frequency of collision. Okay, so ultimately it will increase the rate of reaction if you increase the concentration of the reactants. Okay, and the next one would be the surface area. Surface area of what? Surface area of either the catalyst or the reactants. Both works. You can increase the surface area of the catalyst or the reactants. How to increase the surface area? You can grind it so that it becomes a powder. So meaning the size uh, decreased. Okay, surface area increase. So uh, surface area increase at the same time size decrease. It happens uh, simultaneously, okay? So if you grind something, then it will have a smaller size and also the surface area will increase. Okay, so if this happens, then you have a higher chance Uh, that the reactants and the catalyst would collide with each other. So higher chance of collision again. So if there's more collision, then the rate will increase. 
Okay, what about reading a graph to know the rate of reaction? So if you have a graph and you see a graph like this, you see another graph like this. Okay, so the more steep it is, it means the faster the rate. So this one less steep. So it means slower rate. Okay, so here on the x-axis usually is um, say the volume of product, volume of yes. So it could be something else. It could be mass of products. So in this case, I put as volume of products. And this side is time. The unit is usually seconds or minutes. Okay, it could be minutes as well. Okay, how do we read this graph? If they ask us, um, what's the maximum uh, product or maximum amount of volume that you get? So you just use a ruler. Let me try using another color. So you use a ruler to measure it. If it's done on the screen, you can use a ruler to measure it on your screen and read the value here. That's the maximum amount of volume of products. Okay, and if they say, when did this reaction end? So you need to find out when did this graph uh, turn flat. So when the graph is flattened, that is the time the reaction completed. So say here, this is when the reaction completed. What about the one for a faster rate when the reaction completed? So maybe somewhere here, it already flattened. So you do need to use a ruler to make it accurate. So this is how we read um, when the reaction completed, when the graph turns uh, flat and the curve is flattened. Next is the brief chapter of chemical energetics. So remember, you only learn two of this reaction progress, one for exothermic and one for endothermic. Okay, so on the X axis is the progress. And the Y axis is the energy level. So for exothermic, uh, it means it released the heat to surrounding. Remember, you can only measure the surrounding. You can't measure what's on the reactant and the product. So the reactant is higher and the product is lower in energy because it released the energy to surrounding um, while the reaction happened. So the energy change here goes down. So it's negative value. What will you see? You will feel that the beaker feels hot, okay? Uh, if you use a thermometer to measure, uh, rise in temperature. What are the examples? Combustion, acid and base. Acid and base means what? Acid and base means neutralization. So anything that feels hot or the temperature rise when you measure it with a thermometer, or if you touch the conical flask or beaker, it feels hot. Okay, for example, acids and base or combustion. Okay, next will be endothermic. So the other way around. For an endothermic, the reactants uh, has lower energy. And the products has higher energy. So the enthalpy change or the energy change goes up, meaning a positive value. The reason is because the reactants took the energy from the surroundings, such as the water in the beaker. So if you have a beaker and then you measure the temperature, so you feel that the beaker 
uh, feels colder after the reaction. Okay, if you touch this, it feels cold. The reason is because the reactants has taken the energy from the water in here and the product has higher energy, but you can't measure the reactants in the product. You can only measure the surrounding. So although the reactants in the product, you see a positive in its energy level, but you see that the surrounding has become colder. Okay, so a drop in temperature because we're measuring the surrounding. So we're measuring the temperature of the water here inside this beaker and the temperature has dropped because it feels colder. Examples of endothermic reaction is anything that you need to heat in order for it to happen, such as if you cook. So you do need to provide a uh, fire so that your food gets cooked, right? So if you need to provide heat to something, it means that the reactants needs to uh, absorb energy to become the product. Like cooking, you need to heat it up so that the reactants uh, can become products. Another example would be ice melting. So when ice melt, it will just absorb energy from its surrounding. It will absorb from, uh, let's say you take the ice out to your dining table. It will just absorb from your dining room. So when the ice melt, the surrounding actually feels colder while the ice uh, melt. Also study your class notes for more details on this chemical energetic.